through 75 counties and hundreds of investigations. From the most violent crimes to petty infractions. This is Arkansas Crime Watch with Kevin Kelly. A deadly week throughout central Arkansas as law enforcement investigate at least eight different homicides. Good evening and thanks for watching Arkansas Crime Watch on Fox16.com. I'm Kevin Kelly. Take a good look at this map and you can see exactly where these crimes took place. One in North Little Rock, one in Jacksonville, one in Pine Bluff, and five others in the city of Little Rock. We begin our coverage this evening in North Little Rock, where a shooting this past Wednesday left one person dead. It happened on Stan Ridge Road. Our Rochelle Turner talking with victims of the family. I spoke to the victim's family who say their loved one, 22 year old Richard Pickard was shot and killed. They were heartbroken when they heard the news and they're fighting for justice. Oh, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it right. Monica Pickard at loss for words. Hold my baby. Hold my baby. Pickard says her 22 year old son Richard was shot and killed on Thursday. She shared these pictures with me. Uh, he drew disability because he was not right on, right on things and, and he just lived his life and tried to fit in after his daddy died. The family watched as detectives with the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office collected evidence from a home on Stanbridge Road. Uh, when deputies arrived on scene, they found an adult man that was suffering from a gunshot wound. That man was rushed to the hospital uh, where he later died. During the investigation, the Sheriff's Office says they located a car that was connected to an alert they sent out. It is a person of interest that we've taken into custody. The family just wants to know what happened. Why? Why he was a 22 year old kid and yes, he did run up and down these streets and do things that you know people didn't like but it who is he to take someone else's life? We're very early on. Uh, we're very early on in this investigation. We want to bring uh, justice to the victim's family. We want to be that voice for the victim. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office says if you know anything about this case, you're asked to give them a call. Reporting in Little Rock, I'm Rochelle Turner. Back to you. Police in Jacksonville looking for clues and answers as to who shot and killed a man on South 1st Street just after 1030 Wednesday night. When police arrived, they found 27 year old Chad Thomas suffering from a gunshot wound. He later died at an area hospital. Earlier this week, we spoke to his mother who was hoping for justice in her son's slaying. If anyone has information on who murdered my son, Chad Ryan Thomas, please call Jacksonville Police or Crime Stoppers. So far, no suspect information has been made available by authorities, but if you can help them with the investigation, be sure to give them a call. Police in Pine Bluff also busy investigating the city's fourth homicide of the year after a man was discovered dead inside a home Thursday afternoon. The crime taking place along the 100 block of Talbot Street. The victim identified as 48 year old Armichi Morgan. Still unclear at this time how he died or whether any suspect information exists. Be sure to follow Fox 16 online for additional updates. Little Rock police are actively investigating a number of fatal shootings from last week that resulted in five people being killed. We we'll begin with a shooting that happened on April 18th on South Monroe Street. Police were alerted to the area by shot spotter. When they arrived, they found 33 year old Kiero Turner dead inside a car. They also found 35 year old Ricky Turner several blocks away. He too had been shot and was in critical condition at the time. Three days after the shooting, U.S. Marshals and Little Rock Police arrested this man, Anthony Thomas Jr. Police believe he's the one responsible for the shootings. He now faces charges of capital murder and attempted capital murder. No bond was set. 24 hours later on Sunday, April 19th, another fatal shooting, this time at the Spanish John's apartment complex on West 65th Street. Police were dispatched to Baptist Health in reference to a shooting victim. 28 year old Jarvis Washington had been shot several times and told investigators shortly before he died at the hospital that he had been shot at the apartment complex. When police arrived, they found 39 year old Portia Gibson dead inside the apartment. Police believe it may have been the result of a domestic dispute. The case is still being investigated. Then on Tuesday, police made another discovery. 
two people found dead inside a car parked in an alley between Arch Street and Broadway. Officers were called to the area in the early morning hours to investigate a suspicious car. Investigators spent roughly eight hours at the scene trying to figure out what happened, including how the car ended up in such a remote location. Right now it's unknown if it occurred at this location or if it occurred somewhere prior to and then they're, now they're here or transported here. So we're looking at that. Uh, our crime scene will kind of evaluate some things today and we should know a little more this evening on it. So far, the identities of the victims have not been released and there is no suspect information. Turning now to our crime report, Arkansas State Police and Prairie County deputies tracked down an inmate who escaped from the Prairie County Jail Thursday night. According to a report, this man, Earl Parks, along with another inmate identified as Craig Gillum, pushed a prison guard down after the guard opened the door to check on a sick inmate. Gillum was caught, but Parks, believe it or not, managed to jump into the White River and swam across it. He was caught Friday morning after a business owner and his son caught him sleeping in a car and held him at gunpoint. Little Rock Police Chief Keith Humphrey is being sued by his second in command and two other officers. Assistant Chief Hayward Finks and two other officers filed a lawsuit against Chief Keith Humphrey and the city of Little Rock earlier this week. The suit claims the police chief retaliated against them following their testimonies in the Charles Starks trial. Our Claire Kreitz digging deeper into the lawsuit and the allegations. They're calling it a campaign of retaliation. In this lawsuit, Finks and two other plaintiffs claim Chief Humphrey slammed doors, screamed at them, and even changed officers' positions and reduced their pay. They say it all comes after Finks told the truth in Charles Starks' trial. Three of LRPD's top officers are now suing their head of command, and it all stems from the trial of an officer involved in a controversial shooting almost one year ago. During the trial, Assistant Chief Hayward Finks took the stand and said the investigation was rushed. In this lawsuit, Finks claims Chief Humphrey took that testimony and used it against him. The retaliation started immediately after. Chris Burks is one of the attorneys representing Finks and the two other sergeants listed on the complaint. He says Humphrey went directly to Human Resources the day after Finks testified, and it just continued to get worse. Yelling, slamming doors, um, you know, classic retaliation that the law is designed to prevent. Months later, Finks' testimony was used during Starks' reinstatement case in January 2020. The suit claims shortly after this, Chief transferred Finks' brother, Sergeant Dwayne Finks, and Sergeant Reginald Parks from school resource officers to patrol without any explanation. They've had their, their jobs changed, their, their money taken away, their schedule changed. The list of complaints goes on, but ultimately the officers just want their original jobs back and Finks wants the retaliation to stop. He just wants to go to his job every day, work with the community, try to ensure that, that Little Rock is a safe place to raise his family. But Burke says this is a way to make sure all officers feel safe taking the stand in the future. We've got to have a court system that allows law enforcement officers to tell the truth, and we think this lawsuit is a good way uh, to get moving in that direction. We have reached out to the city of Little Rock and LRPD. They are aware of the lawsuit, but have not been served with papers just yet and say they have no comment. Burke says there will likely be more filings in this case. He's confident now that Finks has come forward, more officers will do the same. Guys, back to you. A man wanted for hitting a nearly two-year-old boy and then leaving the scene of an accident turned himself in. Police say Elvin Williams III hit the toddler at Madison Apartments on April 2nd. He did stop briefly, but he, then he took off. A warrant was issued for his arrest. The boy's grandmother says her grandson spent five days in Children's Hospital recovering from his injuries. He's now back at home healing from those injuries, but the grandmother still doesn't understand why Williams bolted. I don't think he's a he's just like a bad person, but even if it was an accident, it was an accident, just comply with the police and give them the information they need, so my grandson can get his justice. Williams is facing a felony for leaving the scene of an accident. Little Rock police identify a suspect in a homicide from last month that took place on South Gaines Street. Keith Farr Jr. is wanted for the March 27th murder of a man. Police say the man's body was found inside a home by a woman who told police she had also been shot at. 
Detectives think Farr is the one responsible. They're asking anyone with information on his whereabouts to contact them. He should be considered armed and dangerous. Tonight's mug of the week goes to this man, Sean Kevin Collier, who at least was prepared for his mug shot, equipped with the face mask, as you can see. He was booked into the Garland County Jail April 21st and was charged with possession of a controlled substance and two counts of possession of a drug paraphernalia. His bond set at six grand. As we leave you tonight, here's a look at Arkansas's Most Wanted. We do want to remind you all of the suspects you've seen tonight are innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. Remember, if you have any information on any of these cases we talked about tonight, you're asked to call your local police department. Thanks for watching Arkansas Crime Watch. I'm Kevin Kelly. Be smart, be safe, and if you see something, say something. I'll see you tomorrow night on Fox 16 News at 530 and 9.